Katrina and the Waves and Walking on Sunshine. Well, we might not be walking on sunshine, but we're going to play with light now. And that's because my next guest is a wonderful photographer. He's David Gilliver and he joins us now. David, a warm welcome to my lair. Yeah, thanks for having me. Nice that's to meet you. a beautiful Guernsey accent you're sporting there. Where are you from, yeah, sir? Isn't it just, uh, I was born in Aberdeen and uh, moved down to Guernsey uh, 12 years ago, but I've lived in Glasgow for the first 21 years of my life, so that's why I sound... Like I've got a bit of a Glaswegian accent going on. Oh, it's wonderful. It's very rich to listen to. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, what brought you to Guernsey? Um, well, my family's got a fairly strong affiliation with the island. We used to come down um, on holiday as children every year, probably from the age of something like three to about 16. Um, and then my sister came down two years before I did, about 14 years ago, to work. And once I finished studying at art school, where I studied photography in Glasgow, uh, yeah, I followed suit and headed down as well, and I've been here ever since. Which college were you at in Glasgow? It was the Glasgow School of Art. Very nice. Yeah, so it was lovely. That proves to those in the know that he's a mite talented. It's quite difficult to get in there, David, isn't it? It is, yeah. I think it's something like one in every 200 applicants or something crazy like that. So, yeah, I was considered myself very lucky. Uh, we went up with the youth theatre to do a tour around Glasgow, in fact, oh. before it was redeveloped. The art school? Uh, no, we went to oh, the actual. We, we were putting the gorbals as young students. Oh, my goodness, right. Before it was redeveloped. And yeah. they, they took us to the Glasgow Art Exhibition. It was beautiful. Yeah. The, the, the proper museum there, isn't there? And it's, yeah, stunning. The, the, the main building was built by Charles Rennie Macintosh. That's it. So it's, it's just absolutely... Newt's it's an incredible place. Yeah, Him with the chairs. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Him with the stained glass and the chairs. Um, when you came to Guernsey as a child on holiday, yeah. as many... Artists have done in the past, many painters, they've noted a certain light about Guernsey. Did that strike you even as a young chap? Um, in all honesty, probably not. I think I was more concerned about finding crabs and fish in the rock pools rather than looking up and <laughs> absorbing my surroundings too much. Um, but it's certainly something I've, I've come to notice uh, more and more as a photographer because it obviously... You're obviously, obviously constantly looking around and absorbing your surroundings and the Channel Islands have a very unique kind of light about them. But you're not photographing ordinary photographs in an ordinary way, are you? Can you explain to people who might not have seen your work yeah, of course. what you do? Yes. Um, I, I do daytime photography as well uh, before it gets <laughs> too weird. I do a lot of nighttime photography. I think that's what you're referring to. I specialise in night photography um, or light painting as it's come to be known as or painting with the light as a lot of people call it. And it basically entails setting up your camera on a tripod so it's very still and using a very long exposure time, um, which allows the camera to absorb what little ambient light is around to, to fully expose the photograph eventually. Um, and during the length of that exposure, because it's normally minutes rather than seconds, it could be anything up to 20 minutes long. Really? I'm able to Yeah, I'm able to walk into the landscape that I'm photographing and basically waft lights around like a bit of a loony. And uh, if I'm careful enough, you can create rather refined light sculptures. If you know it does doing. look incredible. It mm, looks otherworldly when you look at the, the work itself. Why yeah. did you decide to get into this sort of photography? <clears throat> well, about five years ago, um, I inherited my first digital camera, almost in error. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a gift from my sister and her husband. Um, and it sat there for about a year gathering dust. Did uh, you I, look scornfully at it? At I did because I studied in dark... When I studied photography, I worked in dark rooms and with all sorts of old format cameras, um, large format, medium format and so on. And it was all black and white to start with and then eventually colour photography, which we developed ourselves in dark rooms as well. So the, the dawn of the digital era, era did make me rather nervous to start with. It felt like starting afresh, I suppose. And I suppose to, to you, with your experience, it... it I'm presuming it didn't feel like proper photography when digital cameras first came exactly. out. Exactly. I think I think most people that have learned the trades in dark rooms in the old school kind of manner, um, it's very easy to turn your nose up at it a little bit. Certainly to start with, I think, um, exactly, because it doesn't feel raw and as, as if there's much creativity about the process because in a dark room you are in control of every aspect of the development process. And it's... The actual photographs we see from you, mm -hmm. from your soul, are very artistic, but they're, they're actually quite simple to look at. Why do you think they've been so successful? Is it the simplicity, do you I think? think it is. I think they're aesthetically simple and straightforward. You know, it's it's the whole point, my, the whole idea behind this when I started doing it was to, I guess, to introduce to the Guernsey public imagery of landscapes that they're familiar with, but look completely different, or well, not completely different, but there's something unfamiliar about them because they've been taken at night time. So they're recognisable, but foreign at the same time, and I found that concept quite interesting. 
I just kept me fascinated. It, it's kind of spooky as well, or it, it has the potential to be. Have you thought yeah. of doing any kind of trick photography around about Halloween time? or Because uh, I'm, I'm thinking mainly of the orbs. A lot of people yeah. claim to see orbs <laughs> yeah, I've read in about photographs, this, yeah. but right. of the supernatural, if you believe in that. But yeah. you create orbs yourself, don't you? I do, yeah. Um, it's funny, there's a, there's a site on our website that I... I use called Flickr, which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. It's like the Facebook for photographers, I suppose. And, yeah, there's a group in there called Orbs, and people upload all sorts of strange things. You know, these small circles are orbs that have been found in photographs. Is it dust in the lens? I think it might be, yeah, or or, or va- some, something to do with the vapour and interfering with the lens in the atmosphere. It's difficult to say, but um, it's amusing how people read into these things. But, yeah, mine are far more literal. I'm actually spinning these orbs with lights, and uh, and they've come to be known as orbs by most people in the light painting community. Do you, you say you um, walk a lot of light around. What yeah. exactly are you wafting? What sort of light is it? A torch? It, or? It's very various, various different tools normally based around LEDs. It depends what kind of light painting I'm trying to create. So for the orbs I use small they're called finger LEDs. You might have seen them. They attach to the fingers. They seem to be quite popular with children. Um, they sort of wave their hands around with lights attached to the fingers. And I basically attach them to a device and spin those lights around because they help me to gain accuracy over how I create these, mm. these balls of light if you like. Um and for the ribbons, I use what can be described, I suppose, as a bit of a posh lightsaber. So a bit of a Luke Skywalker out there. Now you're talking. Yeah, exactly. Now you're talking. Yeah. And torches as well. It depends. It depends Are you a good guy or a bad guy? Is it red or green? I think I'm a good guy. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my son's into Star Wars big time at the moment. I know all the names. I bet you do. Um, what sort of cameras do you use, just for those people who'd like to emulate what you do? OK, well, without causing an argument or offending anyone out there, I'm a Canon man. Um, I'm not one of these people that swears by Canon and rubbishes Nikon or the other way around. I always find that amusing, the sort of interwar between the two mm. makes. Um, people feel quite strongly about them, but this is the cam- This is the make that I was introduced to when I first got given this camera. And but it's, it's quite a macho to. thing amongst photographers, isn't it? Sometimes they can get really It can be very precious. protective, yeah, and I think they, you know, I mean, they the, defend that make. The users don't even go mm. there. No, exactly. Well, that's it. it. It feels like there's only two makes out there sometimes, but there's a whole whole array of different manufacturers. But I use a Canon 5D Mark II for my light painting, which is a it's a fairly expensive camera. It's probably about one and a half thousand pounds. But the the reason that it's expensive is because it has a fairly high quality sensor inside the camera, which helps me with the low light levels at night time. Would you ever go back to using normal format cameras, if that makes sense? As in the ones I would have previously used for darkroom development and so exactly. on, film cameras. Your Hasselblads and your. I haven't to date for what I'm doing, um, and I think that partly ties in with why light painting is becoming more popular in this this digital era because the photographer gains a, a far higher level of control over the exposures. And of course, if something doesn't work out, you, you see the results immediately on the screen, so you can just delete it and try again. But of course, as you'll as you'll know, back in the you know, the film the film days. You'd spend, you know, days taking these pictures and then waiting a day or two to get the film back, only to realise that you had the settings wrong or the film didn't suit what you were doing, and it was it was all a pile of rubbish. And you'd have to start again after five days of work. You could use a couple of effects in the dark room, though, couldn't you? Just you in could, a similar yeah. Way. Well, yeah. When you when you develop the picture in the dark room, you're literally using light to, um, you know, to create the picture on the photographic paper. So yeah, you could you could there were there were ways of of darkening and lighting areas when you're in the development phase. But, of course, the, the manner in which I do it now, I'm, I'm using, I suppose, that same kind of literal method in the landscape myself with the actual lights that I move around. Where can we see your work, David? Um, primarily on my website, which is www.davidgilliver.com. Um, and I also have a Facebook page, David Gilliver Photography. That's G I L L I V E R. It looks like it it's spelled Gilliver. It sounds like it should be with a J, but it's it's with a G. G. Yeah, it's, it's like Gulliver, but Gil- but Gilliver. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, I'm going to have the borrowers attacking me in a minute. <laughs> Don't crack on with the show. Yeah. I'm I'm so sorry we've run out of time. Not I could talk all. to you all morning, but David Gilliver, thank you very much indeed, and come back and tell us about your latest work, or your latest project when you get up to it. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me. My pleasure. And if you'd like to log on to his website to find out more, it's David Gilliver. G I L L I V E R.